Hello, Frisco. We are back with Mayor Cheney and the reelect Mayor Cheney campaign to discuss Universal and that project this week. So, Mayor Cheney, welcome and thank you for coming back. Thank you, Wendy. Look forward to it. Yes. So, today we're talking all things Universal. And, you know, Everybody seems to have an opinion in this town, but I'd like to back up a little bit and understand how this even got started. Did Universal approach Frisco or was it the other way around? Yeah, so Universal was in market, you know, look, looking to open kind of a uh, new concept as far as doing a micro theme park, you know, designed for young children. You know, of course, you know, this North Texas area is known for young families, um, certainly. Um, and from what we understand, initially, they were looking to cities to the north of us. Um, and they kept driving through Frisco as part of their site selection team. And, and you know, just kind of kept hearing the buzz of Frisco and everything happening here and all the different amenities from, you know, PGA Frisco that's you know, opening soon to, you know, projects that, you know, have opened like the Star and others. And, you know, thought that Frisco was the place to be. Um, so, you know, really, they kind of more targeted Frisco, which is certainly humbling. And for a city that a worldwide brand like Universal Studios, um, you know, would think so highly of the city of Frisco as a place to invest $500 million into their next project. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> do you think or... I'm sure you do think. So tell us how you're looking at Universal fitting into the rest of the city, just the balance of the market and how will it also benefit residents who don't have children aged three to 11? Yeah, I mean, you know, communicating the story of Universal, you know, we knew it was going to take a longer amount of time because, you know, truthfully, when people read a headline, they paint a picture immediately. Um, and that's the same process that city council went through. And so when we first heard of the idea, you know, I think council pretty much looked at it and said, well, that's that's not something that we're really interested in. We've been approached by different theme parks um, quite a few times over the years and had unproven operators or it was concepts that, you know, we didn't really um, like. And so, you know, kind of our initial reaction to the quote unquote headline was negative as well. Um, but then we started digging into the details. We started asking questions. They started showing us a, a vision of what the project was going to be, but more importantly, what it's not going to be. Um, and so, you know, it's not going to be a Six Flags intentionally. It's not a Universal Orlando. It's really, there isn't a great comparison. Um, you know, it's probably more like our Kid Zania project that's already at Stonebriar Mall. Just a little bit larger than what that offers, but very kind of complementary to what they're trying to do, catering from to ages three to 11. You're not looking at big roller coasters or those kinds of things. And so, you know, we flew out to Orlando, we walked the park, we did some test rides, we rode the Dr. Seuss ride um, and some others. Um, walked around, saw how they took care of it, saw how they managed their operations, pointed at different things saying, you know, is it is that what this is going to be? And it'd be like, no, that's not. Is this? Yes, it is. And so really got kind of a picture painted for us, you know, and then our opinions really kind of started to shift about how this really fits into what we're trying to do here as a community. And, you know, what we're trying to do is to, you know, deliver world-class amenities um, for our families, where our families can make their memories right here in their hometown. There's already a lot of options for that. You know, our, some of our family's favorite memories were, you know, at uh, Rough Riders games. You know, we love going to Rough Riders games and the fireworks show, and that just became part of our family's kind of DNA growing up. And, you know, when our kids were younger, I would have loved to have had a universal theme park such as this that they could go to, you know, anytime they wanted. Um, we're already looking forward to our grandkids about being able to, you know, experience that. Um, but it's first and foremost an amenity for our residents. But bringing visitors to our city is a very intentional strategy. So that kind of operates in the background and a lot of people don't realize it. And so Frisco currently has roughly 7 million visitors a year. Um, that come here for shopping, for dining, for one of our events, one of our business conference centers, you know, one of our hotels, you know, they're visiting our attractions, um, you know, riders games cannot be filled and FC Dallas games cannot be filled by just residents of Frisco. So they're coming from other areas. 
those visitors, they help our businesses here thrive um, as they continue to fill restaurants and against you know, retail and so forth um, and make it a possibility for our residents to also be able to enjoy them. And they also generate sales tax. So you asked, you know, if I'm never going to go to this park, what does it mean for me? Well, this is going to be a huge economic engine. So it's estimated three and a half billion dollars of economic impact to the city of Frisco um, over 20 years. And the sales tax that it generates is going to fund a lot of operations for our community. But it also funds our economic development corporation and our community development corporation. The CDC, the latter, that's how we build our regional parks. You know, that's how we do things like our stadiums. That's how we help build our library. You know, really those quality of life components is what is fueled by that. And so Universal is going to be a, a huge engine for that. We anticipate it's going to generate um, only second to Stonebriar Mall as far as the number of sales tax. So, you know, even if you never go to Universal Studios, this is going to help us pay for parks throughout Frisco and um, operations and other amenities. Okay. I, I've heard a number um, and uh, that the entire park is going to be around 30 acres. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So the entire site is 100 acres. So to paint right. that picture, that's about the size of Warren Sports Complex. Now that includes the hotel and parking and those kinds of things. So when you get into the actual kind of perimeter of that, the physical park space, it's basically a third of that 30 acres. So if you visualize Warren Sports Complex, you take a third of that. That's how large the park is. So it is really kind of a smaller regional park. Um, you know, it's going to draw people from the area. Probably a, a three-hour drive is probably, um, you know, the longest that you would see. If people are going to get on a plane, they're going to go to Universal Orlando, um, take their family there. But this is a, a regional attraction, and it's a complimentary attraction. So, you know, people may come for a staycation where, you know, they may go to Universal on one day, they may go to Kids Zania on the next or visit the video game museum, right. you know, so it's going to kind of really lift up the other family friendly activities that we already have here in Frisco. Absolutely. So you mentioned other people coming, which everyone hears traffic when you say that. So how will this <laughs> impact traffic? And then I've also heard that Universal actually paid for the traffic study. So tell us more about that, please. Yeah, that was a common question. And so that's what all developers do, um, you know, because some a lot of projects never go forward, but they have to deliver a traffic study. And so the city doesn't want to use taxpayer money to fund these things. Um, now, our city staff reviews all of them, make sure their assumptions are correct. You know, the models are um, standard models. And so, you know, it's all reviewed and, and agreed to by city staff. So there really isn't a concern of that. Um, they actually hired Kimberly Horn, who's located here in Frisco, very familiar with our city, um, does a lot of work for our community. So we feel very confident in, in what they delivered there. Um, and that is always the biggest question is, you know, this expectation you know, of traffic, you know, coming. And, you know, especially those that live around El Dorado and the natural reaction if you live near El Dorado is El Dorado is our current biggest pain point. You know, our, our pain point has shifted over the years and it's usually always right at where kind of the end of development is, you know, and that's currently at El Dorado. And so the um, arterial roadways to the north of El Dorado are currently um, under construction and design. So we have over $200 million of road projects just city I'm going north of El Dorado. That's connecting Legacy. Um, it's um, doing uh, PGA Parkway all the way through. It's doing Panther Creek all the way through. Um, the NTTA is expanding the tollway currently. 380 is going to be expanded. So all of these um, road infrastructure projects are under construction. And it's being designed for full build-out. And so we have the whole fields you know, development plan. Um, we knew that the PGA was going to really light this part of our city on fire quickly. And so we started with these road projects before Universal was even thought of. And so thankfully, all of them will be constructed before there's any opening date. But Universal is actually a lower traffic generator than what was otherwise proposed to go there. So what was otherwise zoned and proposed to go on this site was actually um, a really dense project. So high-rise office with unlimited heights, uh, multifamily, 
um, retail. Um, so this project would actually generate a fraction of the traffic um, that that zoning case would have generated. It also removes the traffic to off-peak times. And so with the park hours coming in, it's it's not rush hour traffic trying to get to a high-rise office building. It's moving it to later in the day. Um, and so we looked at traffic comparisons and you know, these comparisons help some and, and don't help either others, you know, but when you try to paint a picture, you know, the average daily counts is similar to what we see with Costco and HEB. Um, you know, in my mind, Collin College was probably the one that stood out to me as being the closest comparable traffic generator. Um, you know, you're looking at relative size and then daily traffic counts and so forth. That that one was very similar. And if you live near Collin College, you know, I think most people would say that there's really no traffic impact to, to that area. So the traffic plans are in place, um, certainly. Um, and, you know, we have a long history of this. You know, so those that have been around for a while, they remember, I remember, you know, we were building our house in the trails back in 2002. You know, when the Toyota Stadium was announced back then, the tollway didn't go through. Um, and there's big stadium being built in the, you know, what seemed like the middle of nowhere at the time. Um, we got the same criticisms when the star was announced, because at the star, when the star was announced, Legacy, you know, and Warren were kind of our worst traffic points there at that point. And then, you know, people were like, well, you're bringing in a 20,000 seat stadium to an already, already congested area. You know, and it was these same kind of conversations. And so, um, you know, we're confident with those traffic plans that, you know, the city has actually put out a great eight minute video that really kind of details those and addresses people's traffic concerns. So if you have that concern, I encourage you to go to briscotexas.gov slash theme park where it has a link to that video and it, it educates you a lot more. Excellent, love to hear that. So also another thing, theme that I hear quite a bit is crime, theme parks bring crime. So how will universal impact crime statistics here in Frisco? Yeah, so if you Google universal and crime, there was a study done by a professor that comes up first, and a lot of our residents kind of point to that. Um, we as a council did that same thing. So, you know, we had read that study as well. So what Chief Shilson did is he actually called that um, person who wrote that study and had specific conversations with them. And, and, you know, they basically said their study results wouldn't apply to a park like this. Um, the person who wrote the study said they would have no concerns living in a neighborhood directly adjacent to it. Um, and it's really because of the target ages and the size, you know, so where theme parks really, you know, the crime, you know, happens more or less is, you know, when you have older participants, you know, or you have a um, entertainment district like City Walk and Universal Orlando, where it's bringing nightlife and bars and, and those kinds of things, um, you know, there's more of those drivers around that. Um, you know, our police chief, you know, took a deeper dive as well and, you know, really has, you know, no concerns, you know, considered with with this happening. Um, you know, we even looked around Kids Zania in the mall and there's been no evidence of, you know, kind of any additional concerns with what that project brought. Um, and so, you know, we certainly, you know, understand, you know, when people look at that and they're thinking, you know, some of these larger or theme parks designed for older audiences, but, you know, that's not what this is going to be catering to to be young children and families great great question um so some criticisms that i've also been hearing we've just addressed crime and we've addressed traffic but another one that i've been hearing is the process itself that it was rushed that there were last minute changes to the deal that were voted on the night it was voted on so tell us more about that please yeah, and typically these kind of big projects, especially with brand names, um, you know, in the past with the Star and PGA Frisco, we actually voted on those projects the same night they were announced. Um, you know, and part of that process is, you know, if you announce these projects, you know, too soon, then other cities try to come in and steal them from you. Ah, okay. And, um, you know, and, and Universal wanted to do this one the same way. You know, they're a public company. They wanted to announce it, then they wanted to be approved. But, you know, we took a different approach to this one because, you know, we knew that if it took us as a council four or five months to really get comfortable, you know, go from apprehension to comfort to excitement, it was going to take the public a much longer process as well. And there's going to have to be a lot more discussions um, with them. And so um, it was first, you know, announced 
you know, in January and then two months later we voted on it. So this is the longest process I would say we've gone through. We've received the most input. We got some great input. In fact, it actually changed and made the project evolve over time and get better. And we were able to put in language to address some very specific you know, concerns also. Um, did multiple town hall formats. Um, you know, we met with businesses, um, you know, people came up and spoke at council meetings. You know, we went out to the neighborhoods. I know I spent 12 hours alone just in Cobb Hill. Um, so there was a lot of dialogue from different sources and kind of depending on the audience, you know, you got a different reaction. You know, when you would do the in-person town halls, it seems like hundreds of people showed up in support and were excitement. And then, you know, you know, people on social media or, you know, in person, you know, may have said a little more negative. So you, you really had to be active going to all four corners to hear the true tone and conversation. And more and more, as we had these conversations and people understood the project better, that apprehension removed and, and opinion started to kind of shift, you know, on, on that. Um, but, you know, people have said, you know, oh, this was a done deal. You know, it's never a done deal, um, you know, until we, we vote on it. Now, certainly a project never gets this far. Um, most projects never see the light of day uh, because we may end them before they're ready to even be discussed publicly. Um, but council did a lot of due diligence, certainly, or never would have gotten to the public part of, of the process. Um, you know, we let them being a public company kind of drive the initial announcement. You know, we if we had to do that over again, we would have done that differently or asked them to do that differently, you know, just so people wouldn't have that same perception. But the negotiations were going really right into the last day um, on it. And then kind of once everything was resolved, um, you know, and had they not resolved it, you know, it may not have passed, but they did resolve everything. They've been good partners and delivered on their promises thus far um, and ultimately got to a point where, you know, council was ready to vote on it. So talk to us about financial incentives that Universal has received. Yeah, I just saw a project the same day. I think Peppa the Pig was announced to go in a, a another Great community. And something. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And it's not near, I mean, it's exciting for them, certainly, and it will be another regional draw. It's not, you know, the same, you know, brand or the size here. And, and what we heard is they got free land and a $50 million incentive package. Um, you know, here in Frisco, the total incentive package, you know, was um, $12 million performance based. Most of that is to help pay for roads and infrastructure to help support the project. Um, and part of that is actually tied to tax reimbursements for them actually sourcing their construction materials from Frisco companies. And so that's essentially we're kind of waiving that so that we know that there's Frisco companies getting part of their construction processes and benefiting from them coming here. Yeah, go ahead and keep going on that topic. Tell us how um, small businesses, any businesses, are having the potential to benefit from the Universal Project. So they did a business town hall. I want to say probably 300 businesses showed up. Uh, my favorite story is the woman who um, has a shutter business, and she wanted to do the shutters for Shrek's home. Um, but, um, you know, since it's not a large park, they're not going to have the same level of support services on site as far as kitchens and merchandising. And so they're really going to be sourcing that from the community. You know, they've told us a story, you know, even in Universal Orlando, how they needed um, chocolate frogs for their Harry Potter. Um, and they went to a business there, asked for 10,000 chocolate frogs, and they sold out in four hours. And basically that business became the chocolate frog maker and they're basically king makers for that small business. Exactly. Well, there's going to be those opportunities here for local businesses in Frisco. You know, you may have a bakery that needs to deliver 10,000, you know, minion donuts, you know, every single morning. Um, and so I think there's a lot of excitement from the small business community as far as what this could potentially, you know, mean for them and, you know, how it can be just an economic draw for the community. Right, right. So let's switch gears for a quick second to you personally. I've heard some rumors that you personally are benefiting from the Universal <laughs> Project. So tell us about that. Um, I, the, yeah, those rumors are not true. I do not own any land in Frisco or partners in any kind uh, of deals. I think just my nature of being in real estate, I think, you know, that's, um, you know, a narrative that's kind of jumped to conclusion, I would say. Okay, very good. 
And so tell us a little bit how you and city council are listening to all residents. I mean, again, this is kind of a spin on a question that I asked earlier, but how are you taking the input from residents who maybe are not excited about the project, but yet it's not right in their backyard either? I mean, tell, tell us the range and how you're listening to those opinions. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of the the residents in Cobb Hill that live directly adjacent, you know, that was a completely different process. Like I said, I spent 12 hours out there. Other council members spent a ton of time out there. Staff spent a ton of time out there just sitting on the front porch having the conversation, you know, and we were able to get very specific concessions for them, you know, making sure Universal was going to be a, a great partner with them. You know, we moved the traffic flows away from their neighborhood um, to the Fields Parkways, um, you know, so really kind of we're thoughtful about, about them. A big piece of it is just having these conversations, you know, so the first question, you know, if someone objects to it is, well, tell me about your objection to, you, you know, is it the traffic? Well, let me answer that for you. And I think, you know, as you have these conversations, um, you know, then the, the the fear kind of goes out. I mean, you, you've been a part of these meetings that we've been having with various neighborhoods and meet and greets, and we go through these and the response, you know, usually at the end is people are excited about it and like, well, you know, I wish we would have known all this information kind of up front. And, you know, and that's what we're trying to do is, you know, just continue to have that conversation, um, you know, with them. Yeah, love the transparency. So when will construction begin and when is Universal going to open? So we would expect construction to begin, you know, probably towards the end of this year. A lot of people are kind of targeting 2026. That's when the World Cup is coming to DFW. Um, so a lot of hotels trying to be open by then. Um, and so, you know, I would say either very end of 2025 or the first part of 2026 as an opening day. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Mayor Jeff Cheney, for joining us again today. Everyone can go to mayorcheney.com to see Mayor Cheney's endorsements, some of his priorities and issues. And obviously, this video will be on the site as well, as well as on Facebook. So, Mayor Cheney, thank you so much for joining us today and answering our questions about Universal. All right. Thanks, Wendy. All right. We'll see you around town.